Canadian Northwest, here the adventurous sons of the old world came to trade with the natives of the new and stayed to intermarry with them. This union created a new half-breed race, the Metis. Here for two centuries, the Metis lived and prospered, a law unto themselves. Then civilization moved westward. Surveyors and land speculators came, bringing with them the laws of land and property. In 1885, resentful and confused, the half-breeds rebelled. Only a handful of fearless, hard-riding men in scarlet coats, the Northwest Mounted Police, stood between Canada's future and the rebellion that was kindled across the border in a little Montana schoolhouse where two men came to speak with the half-breed schoolmaster, Louis Riel. Well, Louis, I got your message, Cardo. But to return to Canada now, that's death. For some, maybe. Not for us. Fifteen years of exile haven't changed you, Cardo. Or you, I hope. You've got to come back and lead us. The Canadian government will never... You and me and Durak here, we're going to be the government. We're going to set up new government, Louis. The half-breed coming to bat post by the armed I've got a gun that shoots a thousand slugs a minute. A Gatling gun, stowed near the border. Judd, I'll never let you lead my people. You can be the saint who leads them, Louis. All I want is the whiskey business. You realize what it means? The blood will flow like water. You won't notice it much. The mounted police wear red coats. Oh, um, right. Um. See my goonies, redcoats. What you say? Redcoats coming, two redcoats, running down the street. Men, please, miss. Quite a crowd. Looks like bargain day in Batas, Jim. Bargain day for trouble. Keep your eyes open, Ronnie, and your holster closed. Say, do you suppose the inspector's right and Riel is back? The inspector is always right. An R-420 miles away. Look at all those men. Where do you suppose they got the guns? Santa Claus. Pull up here. Ow! What's the matter? Something hit me in the face. A stone. <laughs> oh, I see. Hello, Ronnie. I got good aim, not yes? Not now, not now. Ronnie, you don't like me to speak with you, Ronnie? Listen, Lubert, I'm on duty. Oh, on duty. Then I don't say a word. I wait till I see you tonight, yes? <laughs> tonight, Ronnie. That's fine. Jim, listen, I couldn't I help I told you to forget that clooch. She's poisoned. Oh, Jim, I was only... Never trust a blue-eyed squaw. Look, there's the old wolf himself. Who? Dan Girac. Go over to the hospital and call on your sister. Stay there till I come. Don't come on a stretcher. Sharp now. Go on. Hello, Dan. Hello, Hi, Jim. Everybody. Quite a crowd in town today. Sure, plenty of friends of mine. Is Riel here yet? Louis Riel is best friend we got. And you'd better advise him to go slow. For 15 years, we go slow. Now we go quick. We give you 24 hour. Here. On this paper, we write what we want. If your government say no, we make new government. You're making a mistake, Dan. The law's in the Northwest now, and you can't fight the whole British Empire. 50 mounted police. Only 50. In all Canada, only 500. We got many thousand of breeds. Chief Big Bear. And Crowfoot got 10,000 warriors. The Indians won't follow Riel. Then maybe they follow Jacques Corbeau. Corbeau? If you bring back that whiskey-running killer, you'll deserve what you'll get. We'll want Corbeau. We're getting Corbeau. You don't stop us. Take your hand off that bridle. Why you tell me? I'm warning you, Shorty. Get back, all of you. Shorty! Shorty! It's the boy. Shorty, the nurse call you. In the hospital. Shorty, do you hear me? A boy. Huh? Shorty, don't you want to see your son? A boy. How did he wait? I got son. I got to tell my wife about this. Oh, oh, yeah. Tim, come in here. I thought you were in trouble for a minute. I was. Sit down. You look busy. My sister's always busy. It's just a bandage for Ecaw's leg. Hold still, Ecaw. Oh. Ronnie, pull up my sleeve, will you? I will. Thanks. April, how can you deliver a baby, set a broken leg... It looked lovelier than a Christmas calendar all at once. Well, you're quite a picture yourself, Sergeant Brett. You'd look well in a frame. We'll look better in the same frame. Let's make it a family album. Let's water the horses. We've got to get Duroc's message on the wire. Right. <laughs> when you look at Ronnie, even his hair stands at attention. Well, I don't know. There's a contrary streak in the Logan breed. Mm, we just know our own minds. You don't know your own heart. I think I do. No, you don't. I've made plans for us, April. Jim. We can... Jim, I've been transferred to Nova Scotia. No, but... 
That place where the codfish grow? Orders are orders in my branch of the service, too. Oh, oh, oh silly cough. I've been counting on you staying here with me. Don't you think that... Why, I think you're splendid. The way you sit a horse and ride through a mob aching to kill you, it makes me tremble with pride. But, Jim, you're too much the born soldier ever to be anything else. Now, listen... You'd have a bugle for an alarm clock and the eggs would click to attention at breakfast. Marry me and see. But you're already married to the service. You see, I want a husband who wants to sit in front of the fire with me at night and hold hands and popcorn and do and say... All the silly things that you couldn't because they'd be gentle and tender instead of iron and steel. Oh, April, I don't understand you. you never understand me, Jim, until something beats you to your knees. You love me. You see, you never even ask me. You just make statements. Well, do you love me? Well, I might, but I don't want to, so I'm going. When do you leave? Next month. We'll see about that. Ottawa can't possibly act on these demands in 24 hours. But us will boil over then, Inspector Cabot, and scald half of Canada. Mm, rotten business. If the Korean Blackfeet rise, there'll be fire and blood from here to Baffin Bay. Cancel all leave, Sergeant Brett. Kit's ready for inspection after a valley. Yes, sir. Inspector Cabot, sir. Well, what is it? A man just rode into the stockade, sir. A man from Texas. He says he must see you at once, sir. Thanks, mister. Evening, Inspector. My name's Dusty Rivers, sir, Texas Rangers. I've been sucked up here following a man we want for murder. Oh, Lily, tell Sergeant Brett I want him. Yes, sir. Here's my Rangers commission. This is my appointment as uh, United States Deputy Marshal. Oh, I've heard of your organization, of course. Thanks. We've heard of yours, too. Hmm. Thank you. You've come at a rather difficult time, sir. Inspector? Sergeant Brett, this is Mr. Rivers of the Texas Rangers. Yes, sir. He's here on a police errand. See that he's fed, billeted, and offered a bath. You're right, hospitable, Inspector, but uh, I want to get started. This way, please. Sergeant Brett will take good care of you, Mr. Rivers. Yeah, thanks. Gentlemen, this is Mr. Rivers of the Texas Constabulary. Texas Rangers. Hello, Mr. Rivers. Seems another criminal has leaked out of the United States, and he's after him. We can sleep in that collapsible man trap there, Sheriff. It's not Sheriff, mister. Good night, Sheriff. Ravelli is at 6 o'clock. Re what? Ravelli. Ravelli. Oh, you mean Reveille. Sleep well. We'll get your man for you. Well, uh, I was counting on getting home by the 4th of July. <laughs> Hogan, come over here. I want to speak to you. Good morning, Jim. Hogan, you weren't at roll call last night. I know. Uh, sorry. Ronnie, listen. I've warned you about that little bet girl. My personal business is my own. It's my business to keep you from tying to a thieving little clooch. I ought to wipe your jaw for Don't that. be a fool, Ronnie. You're against that girl because she's part Indian. No, because she's all bad. You'd lose your eyebrows if I married her, wouldn't you? What? Why not? Do you know who she is? She's Jacques Corbeau's daughter. Corbeau? What of it? Ronnie, you're crazy if you... Sergeant Brett! Well, what is it? Trouble, sir. Miss Logan just rode into the stockade. Figured Constable Spetton and Grove on the wagon, sir. Grove was dead. Hogan, where did you find these men? On the Red Berry Trail. I was on my way to a case. Fenton, can you hear me? What's happened, Fenton? Train, sir. Carrying a Gatling gun. A Gatling gun? Somebody's running guns to Duroc. Did you recognize the men? No, sir. But there was a funny, foreign-looking saddle... Excuse me, Inspector. Uh, can you describe the saddle? Did it have a big silver horn? Biggest I ever saw. Silver all over it. Silver. What that boy saw was a Mexican charro saddle, probably ridden by the man I'm after, Jax Corbeau. Corbeau? Sergeant Brett, have the bugler sound boots and saddles and form a patrol of 20 men. Yes, sir. You'd better stay at the fort, Miss Logan. Matosh is not safe. Thank you, but there are several patients in my hospital there. First team of horses for you, Miss April. Inspector's order. Thank you. Hey, I'll, I'll hit, hit him up for you, Constable. Get over, boy. See, my name's Dusty Rivers, ma'am. The Dusty River is a contradiction, isn't it? Well, uh, I expect you've never been to Texas, Miss... Uh... April Logan. A April? Well, you wouldn't be fooling me, would you? <laughs> Get back all loaded, Sergeant. Take your place. Oh, uh, Sergeant, which part of the parade do I ride in? I'm sorry, but you're not going with us, Mr. Rivers. Well, I'm sorry, too, Sergeant, but I am going with you. Corbeau is wanted for murder here. 
He belongs to the man of police now. He belongs to whoever catches him first. Nevertheless, you're not going with him. Patrol already, Sergeant. Good. Section, right? Well, you're right. Back. Sergeant Brett, hold the patrol. Section, hold. Dismiss your men, Sergeant. Very good, sir. Then you and Mr. Rivers report to me at once. Sergeant Field, dismiss the patrol. Patrol dismissed. In Regina. No patrol is to leave until we're reinforced by Colonel Ardine. It will take them a week to reach us, sir. Corbeau will have Big Bear on the warpath before then. And the Blackfeet. Does the order prohibit sending out a single scout, sir? No. Then I'd like permission to proceed to Big Bear's camp alone and try to keep him loyal. Alone? Hmm. It's a ticklish job, Sergeant. But uh, permission is granted. I'll leave at once, sir. I'll leave at the same time. Where do you want to go, Mr. Rivers? Well, I figure to pick up Corbeau up in Batoche. Why do you think she's there? Well, that's Riel's capital, isn't it? That's where I'm going. Hmm. Very well. Good luck to you both. Gentlemen, I hope you keep your scouts. Dusty Rivers of the Texas Rangers is going out alone to bring back Jacques Corbeau. This is a dangerous job, but Mr. Rivers of Texas doesn't mind mixing it with a little pleasure. Miss April Logan's wagon is just ready to pull out for Batoche, with Mr. Rivers handling the reins. You know, I, I wish Batoche was a thousand-mile ride. <laughs> this beats too hard for even the 20 miles. Lady, to me, it's just like sitting on a cloud. Hey, there's Jim. Are you riding with us, Jim? No, I'm riding the other way. Too bad, Sergeant. I'll send you a postcard. Just a moment. You can't make an arrest in Canada, so I'm sending a man along with you. Mr. McDuff, Mr. Rivers. Now, Constable, I don't want anybody... Mr. Calling. Rivers, you've got somebody. And where would you like me to sit, Mr. Rivers? In front with you or in the back? Well, in the back, Mr. McDuff. Canada's a lot different than what I expected. The scenery? No, no, the people. You haven't had much time to tell about us yet, have you? Well, sometimes it hits you at first sight. I, I mean, <laughs> you can usually figure a man by, well, by the way he handles his horse, but with women it's different. <laughs> what did you expect the Canadian women to be like? Well, like the scenery. Good to look at, but sort of frostbitten. But would you not? I've always understood that Americans were too busy building and selling and shooting each other to waste time saying nice things to women. Oh, we get around to it now and then. Oh, that must be appreciated by your wife. Whose wife? Oh, aren't you married? No, not me. I've always held that a bachelor is a man who never makes the same mistake once. Do you believe that? Well, I did. Until mighty recent. She said, tell me, do you, do you think a plant or something from, from up here would, would do all right in Texas? I don't know Texas. Well, even the moonlight warm and soft along the Pecos River. Oh, Mr. Rivers, have they got fast horses in Texas? Well, fastest in the world. <laughs> I'm betting they cannot keep up with them in. Look, look down the road. All those people. Well, they must be coming from Batoche. Refugees, I'd say. Refugees? Well, there's Mrs. Burns. Mrs. Burns? Stop the wagon. Mrs. Burns, what happened? Miss Logan, don't go into Batoche. They've looted the trading post and driven us out of our home. Well, is Duroc allowing them to loot? No, it's not Duroc. It's Jacques Corbeau. Corbeau. Oh, excuse me, lady. Get up! Gentlemen, you have just heard Corbeau promise this council the backing of Big Bear. And when Big Bear leads the Cree on the warpath, the Blackfeet will rise with them. Morning, folks. Who is that man? What does he want here? Go right ahead, mister. Don't mind me. You rock. Who is he? He's officer from the United States. One talk with Canada government, so I bring him here. I'm a deputy United States Marshal, Mr. Riel. You know my name? Why, sure. Who don't? Here's my credentials. Now, we'd be happy to know if your new government means to work hand in hand with the United States. The leaders of Canada will be most happy to cooperate with the United States. Oh. Well, suppose somebody commits a crime in our country and trails up here to hide out. We'll help you in every way, just as we hope your people will help us. Well, that's fine, because uh, I got a warrant here for the arrest of a man named Jax Corbeau. 
on a charge of murder. Wait! Wait! The council is recessed. Wait here. I'll be back in just a moment. Thanks, Mr. Riel. Corbo, I must speak to you. What's the matter, Louis? Why aren't you at the council meeting? Corbo, there's an American officer here. For what? For you. Well? He wants a warrant for your arrest. What shall I do? <laughs> in two hours, give him a warrant. Then tell him I'm in Big Bear's camp. He can arrest me there. He wouldn't leave that camp alive. Well, you don't want him killed here, do you, Louis? In an Indian camp, who cares? I say to you, Chief Big Bear, once you and your Cree warriors were free men, Canada belonged to you and to us. And it's going to be ours again. Take the war path with us. Fight like you used to fight. Not one of those prairie cops will be buried with his scalp. Big Bear, let me speak. Don't listen to the red coat. Now I warn you. The red coat has come from far. Let him speak. Big Bear, that medal you wear around your neck is the Queen's. The great white mother who sent food to you when your people starved. You're too wise to let a liar make bad blood between us. Men said Queen no longer rule us. Red coats no more our friend. No. This is our friend. This Gatling gun. It fights with a thousand teeth of fire. Make gun talk. If I do, it will tear your lodge to rags. Squaws make new lodge. Make gun talk. Big Bear, a hole in the tent won't change the British Empire. This man, Corbo, is going to hang. I don't want to see you hang beside him. Take it easy, friend. I'm, I'm coming peaceful. Wait. Who is this man? This old Omano Tewa. Hello, Chief. Well, uh, sorry I can't shake hands. Your braves got me tied up a little. Rivers. Hello, Constable. Hey, you sure found Corbo? You're as welcome as a broken leg. Kalkito! Who is he? Spy. Count your men and horses. This man is no spy. He comes to take Corbo, who killed in his nation. Like mounted police want Corbo because he has killed here. Are you afraid of Redcoats, Big Bear? Their blood will spill like other men's? Listen, Chief. Uh, before you turn this Corbo fellow over to the mounted police... I got an order for his arrest, not only from the United States, but from his own chief, Louis Riel. You lie, you... Very brave of you, Corbo. Hitting a man with his hands tied. Get out of my way. Don't reach for your gun, Corbo. I'm paid 72 cents a day to protect dummies like him. Stand clear. He am up here. We have peace. We got no war with red coat yet. But they no take away, my friend. Red coat will go, and this man with him. Yokoka, no, Tewatam. Big Bear was a great chief. His friends will be sorry for him. I'll take that medal, Big Bear. No. No? Then I'll rip it off the chain. Sorry. Keep hugging to you. Sure, you can kill me and take the medal back. But its medicine will be gone. The great white mother gave you this to let you rule over many thousands of her subjects. You are not chief, unless she gives it back to you again. Abbas, here. Now Big Bear will join his blood brothers and fight for real. Big Bear is a great chief. Why, I've heard of him way down in Texas. But how do you know he's the best fighter, Big Bear? The mounted police are Corbo, a great killer of men. This fellow's killed in Texas, and he's killed in Canada. He must be a great gunfighter. But has Big Bear ever seen him killed? How do you know these yarns are true? I'll show you if they're true. Well, he offers to show you. All right. We let him kill now. Who he killed? Me. Slide my guns back into their holsters. Untie my hands. Then tell this tough killer to go to it. Manishwa. Peace I got up here. Thanks, Chief. Now tell Corbo to kill. Nepaha. Go ahead, Corbo. Go. Tell him to shoot, Big Bear. He's been a-bragging about all the folks he's going to kill. Tell him to start on me. Okay. Draw, you yellow polecat. You're a hand at shooting men in the back. What's wrong now? I won't howl at Great Chief's Lodge with the blood of a dog. Big Bear. This man runs yapping across the trail to save his red coat friends. But the medicine gun will roll them all in the dirt. I have not seen this yet. Then look at it. Watch. That 
guns, Tom Reddick. Shooting holes in tents is not killing men. Big Bear, hear me. Before the sun has set three times, I'll bring you the red coats of the mounted police, redder with their own blood and full of holes like a fishnet. Bring me in your hand the empty coat before three suns have set, and my brave will take the wop. Before three suns have set, for a bow will wear iron on his hands. Who is it? Who's there? Eko, open. Eko, what do you want at the hospital at this time of night? You help me, pitch leg. Now I, I help you. Help me? How? Red coats march for Dock Lake. Half three. They wait in woods. They make trap for red coats. The Dock Lake. An ambush. With medicine gun? Yes. Your brother. Keep watch in oil cabin. They this facing. They they got kill him tonight. So he don't see them. Make what you call ambush. Ronnie. <laughs> That is Ronnie who is in danger, Louvette. That's why I came to you. You think I like your brother too much, eh? Oh, Louvette, if you like Ronnie at all, this is your chance to help him. What do you mean, like Ronnie? I love. That's why you don't like me. You think I'm no good for him. Ronnie's on outpost at the old cabin near Beardy Basin. If you love him, Louvette, go to him. Tell him to warn the police not to march on Duck Lake. Why don't you go? I'm being watched. I could never get out of the posh, but you can get through. If you don't warn the police, Ronnie will hate you as long as you live. Maybe that man you love, that big sergeant, he going to be killed, huh? <laughs> That's too bad. You tell me that you love Ronnie. Well, there isn't anything in you but hate. You're a savage, Louvette. You're a vicious, cruel savage. Blood and revenge is all that you know. Not love. All right. I show you love. What do you want, I tell Ronnie? You go? Sure, I go. Tell Ronnie the half-breeds are going to ambush the column at Beardy's Basin. Sure. I tell him. He won't forget what you're doing for us. No. You won't forget. How do you know where I was? Oh, I just here someplace. You know my father, he's pretty mad on me. He find out I got big love for you. Why didn't you tell me Jacques Corbeau was your father? Who do you care who is my father? You hate Jacques Corbeau more strong than you love Louvette? I'd be bat brained about you if your father was the devil himself. But you don't never marry with me now, eh? Once this blow up is over, I'll marry you quick. No. Than... That's too late. Why? My father gonna kill me because I love Red Coat. We'll be married tonight or we don't marry never. Tonight? In Batosh, Father Pika, he marry us right now. I can't leave here. Why? Nothing happened here. Why are you here anyway? Orders. But you'll be back before somebody know. Oh, Ronnie. I love you so terrible much. Well, I'm on duty. They'll hang me, shoot me. Try to understand, won't you? I've got to stay here and watch the riverbed. Other fellow good watcher. He's there now. Maybe you better get in riverbed with him, eh? If your neck wasn't so lovely, I'd break it. You break my heart. I don't live without you, Ronnie. Goodbye. Come here, you crazy little loon. What do you think you're going to do? I go. No, you won't. You're the sweetest poison that ever got into a man's blood. I love you. I want you. We'll be in Batosh in one hour, maybe less. Ten minutes with the priest, an hour to get back here. Ronnie. I'll leave a note for Jerry. Tell him where I've gone. Oh, Ronnie, hurry. Here's the cabin. Well, that's funny, I don't see anyone around. Well, I'd say your eyesight was pretty bad, Constable. If I'm not mistaken, that's a red... Oh, over there. Where? I'm laying on the ground, under those trees. Edwards, give me a hand here. Yes, sir. Turn him over. Why, it's Jerry Cameron, sir. Jerry, with two Cree arrows in him. Get back to the column. One Inspector Cabot, outpost killed. Danger of enemy on all sides. Gallop! You'd better get back with him, Mr. Rivers. Thanks, but if it's all the same to you, I'd like to stick around while you inspect that cabin. Come along, then. Was there anyone else on guard here? Ronnie Logan. Ronnie? Ronnie! Where are you? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be around. Must be down in the riverbed. You'd better wait here. If I don't come back in five minutes... You won't find him there. What? Hey... He left a note for somebody. See? Jerry, I have gone to a wedding. 
Keep an eye on things for me, and I'll bring you a piece of cake, Ronnie. That can mean only one thing. That blue-eyed Kunch has got him. Here, what are you doing? I'm burning this note. Do you mind? That's destroying evidence. Evidence that might put a boy in front of a firing squad. If our whole column rides into a death trap, he'll deserve whatever he gets. I was thinking of his sister. You think it'll help any to make her pay for his mistake? Somebody's paying for it right now. Stretcher bears, bring the wounded in here. Dusty, Dusty, I want to see you, Linda. Hello. Hey, you always turn up where you can help, don't you? Oh, half breed let me leave Batosh this morning. Dusty, what are they all saying about Ronnie? Why, they're, they're all out of their heads. Do any of you know where Ronnie is? Please tell me. They don't know, April. Sergeant Brett, Inspector Cabot wants to see you, sir. What's the trouble, wounded? Yes, sir, he's in bad shape, sir, very bad. I'll see him at once. Jim. I'm glad you're safe, April, but I wish you were somewhere else. Oh, Jim, I tried to get here in time. I could have saved all this if only... Jim, where's Ronnie? I don't know. Jim, is he... Is he... I'm sorry, April. I have to go to the inspector now. <laughs> inspector Cabot, you wanted to see me, sir? Yes. Is there an assault? Not yet, sir. Garrison the Bastion. I have, sir. Red, did you find proof that Logan deserted? Yes, sir. When this is over, make it your job to get him. Bring him to justice. Justice? I'm about to get mine. Take them out, Brett. Yes, sir. Some fool at headquarters... Wants to change the uniform to green. Stand up for the red coat. It's a good color. Inspector. It's gone, sir. Soup ready, Dusty. Will you, will you bring it to the men? Soup? Well, if I pour any more soup down them, they'll bust. Sit down a minute, April. Oh, I can't. There's too much to do. Sit down before you fall down. Special order says you've got to stop now and have a cup of coffee. I'll get it for you. Dusty, what's happened? Tell me. Happened? Did something happen? I, I didn't notice anything happening. Over and over I hear them say his name, but they won't tell me anything. Not even Jim wants to talk to me. Jim's a great soldier. Where's Ronnie? What happened to him? What has he done? Listen, uh, I don't know Ronnie so very well, but, but I know you. The first time I ever saw you, I, I knew you better than I've known anyone in my life. And I know it couldn't be in your brother's blood to do anything that was cowardly. But, but, but love does funny things to people, lady. Oh, even Constable. Is she all right? Yes, of course I'm all right. Rivers, I've got a tough job for you if you'll take it. I'm going to try to get the wounded to the river under cover of the smoke. What smoke? We'll burn the fort. It's your job to get April and the wounded down the river to meet Colonel Irvine's reinforcements. Well, I suppose you're going to stay here and roast chestnut? I have six other men sound enough to ride. I'm going to be there when Corbeau throws those red coats in front of Big Bear. Well, it sounds to me like you're just delivering seven more red coats. Maybe. I'll speak to you outside. Jim. Jim, wait. You've got to tell me. You've got to. I know it. But let me tell you first that I love you. Always, I guess. But nothing under heaven can ever bring us together after... What do you mean? Ronnie isn't dead. He deserted. He could have warned the column and all those men lying dead out there might be living now if Ronnie had... But he ran away. He ran away with that half-breed girl, Corbo's daughter. I don't believe that Ronnie deserted. If you prove it a hundred times, I still won't believe it. I'd expect you to feel like that, April. But when this is over, I'm going to get him and bring him back. And I will get him if I have to follow him over the ice cap. You know what that means for him. I know your duty comes before everything else. And I know it means more to you than mercy or love. We'll go on and follow your orders. 
Kill that boy who was foolish enough to put love before everything else. And don't tell me how sorry you are. Just do your duty and kill. Kill. The battle is over, and Corbo has made good his promise to Big Bear. At a council of war in the Indian camp, Corbo throws at Big Bear's feet the bullet-riddled coats of the mounted police. There are the red coats, full of holes like a fishnet. This one belonged to that sergeant who said he put me in iron. Medicine guns speak like thunder. Yes. Now keep your promise, Big Bear. War. War. As the cry of war echoes through the camp, seven riders appear, silhouetted against the sky. Six redcoats riding abreast, and the sergeant in the lead. A thin red line of courage advancing to almost certain death. So, red man, boy, if that sergeant wasn't killed... He will be now. Put down your gun. You cannot kill a dead. Big Bear, tell your war chief to spread his blanket on the ground. Tell your men to fire. Kill the dogs. You tell me they are dead. Let us know what dead men want. Akupata. The spirits of the brave are still inside their red coats. They are sacred. Tell your men to lay them on the blanket. No. No. These enemies are in your hands. Pull them down. Kill them now. If one shot is fired, the soldiers of the queen will come like the sands of the great salt sea. She lies. There are only seven. Pull them off their horses and kill them. There's no magic in their red coats. These handcuffs are for you, Corbo. Shoot them, you fools. Shoot them. I said you'd wear iron on your hands, Corbo. Shoot them. Kill them. Two men on the left. Dismount. No. No. I'll take the prisoner. Come on, Corbo. No. Kill them. Kill them, do you hear? Big Bear, I have brought back the medal from the great white mother. Will you wear it again around your neck? Will Big Bear kneel to the queen and be the chief of his people again? Decree our brothers to the prey. Big Bear will kneel. That will be Colonel Irvine's camp just around the bend of the river. I was afraid we'd never see that camp. You're going to see it and get some rest. I'm leaving. Why? Oh, we're uh, going hunting. Jim has Corbeau by now. Or Corbeau has Jim. I wasn't thinking of Corbeau. You mean Rami? Well, uh, I'd like to have a powwow with that little wolf girl he's been running around with. Ronnie's dead. I know that. He wouldn't run away. If he were to blame, he'd come back and face it. Sure he would. But maybe, maybe he can't come back. Maybe, maybe he sort of lost his head and... Well, I believe I could make things easier for you, if you'd let me. Dusty, you're a grand person, but there's nothing anyone can do for me. Sure there is. Come back to Texas with me. And if Ronnie's alive, why, he'll find us there. If you want what's left of me after all this, I'll go with you. I'm a coward, Dusty. I won't run away. You're the loveliest and the gentlest lady I've ever known. But you haven't shut your eyes in 24 hours. I don't want you to say yes. Without thinking. I don't want to think. You won't have to in Texas. Put in the shore, Todd. You take April on down to uh, Irvine's camp and then meet me back here. Would you mind telling me what we are up to, Mr. Raven? No, uh, I wouldn't if I knew myself. Where are we heading? Well, there's a little Cree village up here somewhere. And I got an idea that... Hey, whoa. Quick to matter new. Hey, Todd, look over there. That cliff on the other side of the river. I see the cliff. What of it? You don't happen to see a Gatlin gun, do you? Huh? I do know. Right on the edge, too. You know, Todd, if a man could ride up there and slip a rope over that gun, he could jerk it clean into the river. He could, if they didn't see him first. Well, I'll take my chances on that. 
Now, you head around back of the cliff and wait for me. But how will I know if you run the gun off the cliff? Mister, when that gun gets a rolling downhill, everybody for ten miles is going to know it. Open up, Louette. I know you're in there. Open up. What do you want? Oh, just passing by. I heard you were here and thought I'd drop in. You look for Ronnie, huh? Well, you don't find him here. He never come here. Maybe. You come to hurt him? Nothing I can say can hurt him any. It's been said already. What's been said? Don't listen to him, Ronnie. Go back. Hello, Ronnie. What's been said? I want to know. Well, that you run off from your post and you're hiding out like a yellow skunk because you haven't got what it takes to go back and swallow your medicine. Does April say that? No. She figures you're dead. She knows if you could even crawl, you'd get back there and face him. Don't listen. If you go back, they kill you. Well, she may be right, Ronnie. Listen, I tell the truth. Ronnie not deserved his post. I make him come with me. I tell him we'll be married. I lie. And then I have half to tie him. Look, you see his hands? He try for days to get back, and then he know it is too late. You must believe it. I believe you, Louvet. But he's still guilty. Well, Ronnie, I got to be heading back to Bertosh. You coming? What for? I'm already buried in every grave of the men killed at Duck Lake. Well, they're bound to find you. With your help? No. I fix so he don't tell nothing. He never tell Ronnie. Never. I'm not going to turn you in, Ronnie. But April has a right to know. What she does is up to her. Why don't you let me stay dead? Because you're not a coward. Ready, Ronnie? Yes. I'm ready. Ronnie, I fixed it. He never tell. He... Hey, back so soon? What was it you fixed so well? Where is Ronnie? Well, he's going to Batosh. I loaned him my horse. You lent it? No. Here, yeah, what's the matter with you? Let me go. You can't catch him now? Let go. You're too late, Louvet. Listen, I tell Cree. I tell him to shoot man on horse with white face. What? I want to stop you. Now they shoot Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie! Captain Gower is here to help us get what facts we can regarding the ambush at Duck Lake. Sergeant Brett, Constables Cameron and Logan had the post overlooking Beatty's Basin. Isn't that correct? Yes, sir. Warning should have come from those sentries. Isn't that so? We found Constable Cameron dead, sir. Two Cree arrows in his body. And Logan had left his post? Well, Sergeant? Well, My brother you had see, left sir. his post with a half-breed girl, Louvette Corbeau. How do you know, Miss Logan? Because I sent her myself. I sent her to warn my brother of the ambush. She'd never have known where he was if I hadn't told her. None of us are on trial, Miss Logan. We're only trying to find out what happened. I should have known that she'd lie to him. That she'd... That she was in love with him and would persuade him to run away with her and save his own skin. I don't believe that. And nothing can make me believe it. Sergeant, will you post orders to all detachments to arrest Constable Logan on sight for desertion in action? You can't arrest Constable Logan, sir. What's that? Well, you can't arrest him, sir. I brought him back with me. He's dead. Ronnie. Ah, I'm sorry, Miss April. Put him down over here, man. Sergeant Brett, is this Constable Logan's body? Yes, sir. I don't understand. Well, this boy was captured. Take a look at his wrists where the rawhide thongs cut in. The man has been bound, certainly. I don't know how he got loose, but when I saw him, he was free. Maybe he could have got back to report, but he didn't. Because... There was something that he wanted more than he wanted his own life. What do you mean? Well, I mean the Gatlin gun. Now, the half-breeds had it on a bluff commanding the south approach. Logan got a horse and dragged the gun off, riding like a bat out of Helena. Now, the half-breed spotted him. Bullets were as thick as July flies, but they didn't stop him. No, sir, over he goes. Horse, gun, and man are rolling like a Texas twister over the cliff. Ronnie. Well, that's, that's where I found him, and, and that's where you'll find the gun, under the river. He never quit. He never ran away from anything because it wasn't in him to quit. Where were you all this time? I, um, well, I, I was squeezed under a log so tight I was breathing on the installment plan. 
Shall I include that in my letter to your Texas commandant? Well, I, I hope you won't, because I'll be in trouble enough when I get back without Corbeau. Oh, Dusty. Dusty, you're an angel in leather. Well, I'd, I'd look funny with leather wings. I'm sorry I misjudged a brave man. We all are. Sergeant, you will deliver the prisoner Corbeau to Regina. <laughs> Gone. Like I said, just is gone. He took Corbo with him back to Texas. Corbo's our prisoner. They must have hit the trail early this morning. Last night, Dusty said uh, if he should kind of disappear, I should tell Miss April he'd be back for us. Thanks, Mac. Well, I suppose I'll have to hit the trail myself. Come on, Corbo. We got a long way to go yet. Where are you taking me? You ever seen Texas? It's a wonderful place. You'll like it. Come on. I'll tie my hands out right faster. Yeah, maybe too fast. You'll do all right the way you are. Just a minute, cowboy. Going someplace, cowboy? Well, it don't look like I was going far. Come on, April. It's nobody but Dusty taking a little ride. Hello, Dusty. May we ride with you a little way? Well, yeah, yes, sir. Fine. Well, Dusty, I didn't expect to find you alone. Alone? I'm not. I was afraid Corbeau might be with you. Oh, uh, uh, say, uh, Miss April, do, do Canadians go snow blind in the summertime? I'm afraid we're all blind sometimes. Well, I'm not. They talk that some fellow might try to get Corbeau away from us tonight. Uh, uh, how's that again? We're only a hundred miles from the Montana border, you know, and no telegraph. Mm, is, it, <clears throat> is that so? Well, <clears throat> Jim Dusty seems so restless. Maybe he's thinking of a man who moved in on a friend that trusted him, sneaked in behind his back like a weasel in a hen coop, and stole the one thing his friend valued most. No, 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 I wasn't thinking about that. Wouldn't you say he'd owe his friend a lot for doing such a low, contemptible thing to him? Well, he'd certainly owe him an apology. Well, I apologize. He, you apologize? Jim's trying to tell you that he's taken something that he thought was yours. You mean... you? Yes, Dusty, if I'm free. She told me I'd be all right if something beat me to my knees, but I've been brought down hard. Oh, no, I'm the one who surrendered. I wouldn't change him if I could. Well, I guess I've just had a beautiful pipe dream in the middle of a nightmare. Sure, sure you're free. You got but what we both want, Jim, and... I got what I came for, and and I'll say the mounted police are the greatest outfit I ever tangled with. And the luckiest. The Texas Rangers are two-fisted fighters. And one of them is the most magnificent liar in the world. Well, we'll say goodbye. Good luck, Dusty. Thanks. Goodbye, Dusty. They'll always be a part of Texas in our hearts. Come on, sweetheart. Well, you sit around here all night? No. Nope. Come on, sweetheart. 